Hello friends, my name is AJ. If you don't already know, for the 2020 AP Computer Science exam, you are allowed to use an IDE to write your code. Because of course, the exam will be taken on the computer and you are now allowed to use an IDE. So you may be wondering, what is the best IDE to use on exam day? And we're going to be answering that question in this video. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so there are many different Java IDEs that exist, and I can kind of split them into two main parts. The first one are kind of the heavier programs, the one with a lot more features. However, they may be slightly more, um, they're a little bit larger uh, programs. They may be a little bit slower, but they have a lot of uh, features packed in. And then you also have the more lightweight and simple IDEs where you just write Java code that you may not have some of the same features. And we're going to be looking at all of those. And we're going to start with that more heavier type of category. And the two main Java IDEs that I, um, I kind of put into this category, which are very popular, is IntelliJ, IntelliJ IDEA by JetBrains, and then also Eclipse. Both of these IDEs are very, very popular, but they are very big. So I wanted to go over some of the features, right? And the main ones that these, or the main features that these two have are that they have autocomplete. They have uh, like autocomplete is very going to be very helpful if you need on the exam because you're able to possibly write code faster. Of course, it depends on the person. Some people, they prefer, um, they prefer to just type everything by hand. Some people prefer autocomplete. And so autocomplete is a big feature for both of these. Then the second thing that kind of goes with IntelliJ and Eclipse is also a uh, breakpoint. So you can add little breakpoints into your code to test it. Now, testing code, and I did mention this in a comment before, but testing code in general in this exam may not be the most um, time effective thing because a lot of the times we'll be writing methods which are not going to be in classes. And it's, it's going to be more difficult to kind of set everything up to test it rather than just to write it, okay? And another, uh, another thing now with that about testing your code brings me into some of the negatives with these two IDEs. And the main one is going to be that setup, right? First of all, in when you're working with things like IntelliJ and you're working with Eclipse, you're often creating entire Java projects. And Java projects have a very specific structure and it, they, it actually takes quite a decent amount of time to, to get everything set up and working. Not to mention is that if you're on a slightly older or slower computer or you're on something like a Chromebook where you may not even have these options, it is going to be more difficult for you to actually get it set up and to keep it reliably working without crashing. And that is going to be something that's going to be very, very problematic because in this exam, of course, it's 45 minutes. So majority of your time needs to be focused on answering the question, not fixing software problems. You want everything to work very, very quickly and very, very uh, seamlessly. So now that brings me to the more lightweight programs and the more lightweight IDEs that you can use for Java. And the two here that come to mind are BlueJ and JGrasp. So both of these are actually very good programs uh, in terms of writing Java code. And when you're working with BlueJ, for example, you have to create a class file and you have to do the same thing with JGrasp. And when you're working with BlueJ, you, ha you have these um, nice actually uh, different kind of sections where it color codes, what your methods are, constructors, your fields, everything is actually very good. And it, it, it highlights those in a different color. And the problem though, that kind of comes with uh, BlueJ is the fact that you're going to get a lot of random errors when you're trying to, um, when you're actually trying to write your methods. Because if you notice in the videos that I have made, you know, you, you can write, you can write methods and you don't really get errors because there is no error checking in JGrasp. And JGrasp is the software that I use in my videos. But the problem with uh, BlueJ is that you'll get errors that say, oh, for example, like, you know, this needs to be in a class. So if you're just writing a method to answer a question, you don't want to create an entire class, right? You just want to write the method and be able to write it properly. And that is the main problem with BlueJ is the fact that it's going to give you random errors. And also the other thing is kind of exporting your work is also slightly more difficult. And that brings me to the last IDE, which is JGrasp. And JGrasp is the IDE that I use in my videos, and it's probably the one that I recommend as well. 
So we're actually going to go into it here. I'm going to open it up on my computer. So I'm going to open up JGrasp. But the main benefit of using JGrasp is simply that you, you kind of have everything in one place. And you can see this is my uh, this is my JGrasp window from the from the video from yesterday, which was the Part A 2020 um, FRQ review. And the thing is with JGrasp is it gives you color coding, first of all, which is always very good. But it also gives you the ability to kind of write code without having errors because JGrasp does not have error checking in it. That's about the positive and the negative. Some people need that error checking. But the thing is, is that JGrasp is very easy. You open it. All you have to do is you click on it. This is very small for some reason. I don't know if I can make this any bigger. There we go. I can make it a little bit bigger up here. But you click File, New, Java, and then that is pretty much it. You've now created a Java file, which you can save by using you know, Command S, and you can save your stuff. It's very easy to save files and open them in JGrasp. And then all you have to do is you can just, for example, do Part A, like how I do in my videos, and then you can simply just start writing your code just like that, and it is very easy to use. So definitely um, another benefit about JGrasp is you can export your projects um, into PDF files. So depending on the College Board and that testing environment, if they do not allow you to upload .java files, you can upload a PDF by simply going to File, and then you can either print, you can see here, print to, um, you can print to a PDF or you can save as, and then you can change it to a PDF um, in, in case you have to. You can also just click on this print button. There's a little print somewhere here under print settings and you can then export it to a PDF that way. And another thing you could do is you could just take a screenshot, but do, do remember when you take a screenshot that if you take a screenshot on your computer, it will save it to a GPG. So when you're, when you're submitting your project, make sure to submit it using photo and not using um, a file, like, you know, a, a, um, the file attachment. So the main thing, again, which I recommend when you're choosing your IDE for this is you have to, you, the main thing is you have to find the balance between what you want. Do you want more of the error? You know, if you, there's an error, does it want you to flag or do you want it to flag? Or do you want something that's kind of very, very simple, like JGrasp? It's very, very simple. There's not a lot of things to it. But I definitely recommend JGrasp specifically because of that thing about time. You don't want to have a lot of, um, a lot of moving parts, a lot of slowness, right? When you're, when you're doing constant error checking in the background where it shows up that there could be an error, uh, it, it's very prone that you could have, you know, the computer could slow down. And the worst thing that could happen is if the program crashes. And if you're on older or slower computers, that's more likely to happen. Uh, and if, and if that thing actually crashes, then that is really bad because now you everything that you, everywhere you were writing your code is now no longer um, it's just gone right and you lose all that time you lose all of your code and you probably won't be able to submit your exam in time so using something like JGrasp I haven't really experienced crashes with JGrasp um, and it's possible that it will but it, if you just save your work and every time and it's just generally it's there's less uh, there's less moving parts for something to go wrong right when you go with this simpler program. So that is that is pretty much my recommendation for IDEs. This is a generally short video. I just wanted to kind of go over the different options. Again, there were four of them I went over. Um, kind of in the heavier category, there was um, IntelliJ and um, Eclipse. And then in the uh, more lighter software, uh, there was um, BlueJ and there was JGrasp. But I definitely recommend out of all of them, um, probably JGrasp is your best option, even though you don't get the autocomplete. And if you want the autocomplete in error handling, you should go with something like Eclipse. But if, if again, their main focus is just making sure everything works and being able to write something in a very easy manner, I definitely recommend JGrasp. But it's also very useful uh, for you to make sure that you kind of have all of your files and everything set up before you start the exam. You can have it maybe on a separate window uh, next to, like you can have, you know, half of your screen being your IDE and the other half of your screen being like uh, some other program, right? Or sorry. You can have the ID in one half and then the other side you should have your actual exam open. And that way, if you have your page already set up, you won't have to worry about getting everything set up when that timer actually starts. You'll just be able to type your solutions and then you'll be able to copy and paste them in or you know, if you need to take a screenshot and upload it or export your page to PDF. 
All right, if you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching and more AP Computer Science content will be coming in the future.